On the 19th of September 1783, a large crowd gathered in anticipation at the Palace of Versailles in France. Tens of thousands of people, including King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette, were about to witness a duck, a rooster and a sheep named Montausiel take flight in a hot air balloon. The balloon was invented by French brothers Joseph Michel and Jacques Etienne Montgolfier. Their interest in ballooning followed experiments on smaller paper or fabric bags filled with hot air. Having successfully launched an unmanned hot air balloon in June 1783, a demonstration in front of the king was planned for September. Concerned about the safety of balloon flight, the king suggested using two condemned criminals. The Montgolfiers instead suspended three unsuspecting animals in a round wicker basket beneath the balloon, which was fashioned out of cotton canvas and paper. The balloon flight was successful, soaring 600 meters into the heavens before slowly descending eight minutes later and landing 3.2 kilometers away. The duck, rooster and sheep lived to tell the tale. They were the first living beings to fly in a hot air balloon. Successful human flights were completed later that year. Meanwhile, the Montgolfiers, despite inventing the hot air balloon, couldn't explain why mm. it floated. Joseph Michel mistakenly believed he had discovered a new gas, the Montgolfier gas, which was lighter than air and released from burning embers. We now know the real reason hot air balloons float, and it's nothing to do with an imaginary gas. Hot air balloons simply obey certain laws of physics, or more precisely, the air particles within hot air balloons and elsewhere in the atmosphere obey the gas laws. The gas laws tell us how the temperature, volume, pressure and amount of gas are all related. The gas laws were discovered using scientific experiments, sometimes, though not always, with the help of balloons. Of course, observing and experimenting on the world around us is common practice now. But it was a controversial idea when Robert Boyle was born in Ireland in 1627, the 14th child of the very wealthy First Earl of Cork. Ideas based on reasoning were more likely to be accepted than ideas tested in experiments. Boyle disagreed with this and his vast inherited wealth allowed him to spend his life studying science and promoting the experimental method. In one of his most famous experiments, a J-shaped tube was built by his assistant, Robert Hooke, with mercury poured into one end. At the other end of the tube, a pocket of air was contained. As mercury filled the tube, it exerted increased pressure on the air pocket, and this reduced its volume. All else remaining equal, if you squash a certain amount of gas into half its previous volume, you will double the pressure that gas exerts on its container. Boyle wasn't the first to test these ideas, but he was the first to publish his findings, now known as Boyle's Law. You can feel the effect of Boyle's Law whenever you squeeze a bike tyre or squash a balloon. This makes sense when we consider that gases are entirely made up of many smaller particles, atoms or molecules, constantly whizzing around. By forcing the same amount of gas into a smaller volume, you can feel a higher concentration of particles bumping against or exerting pressure on the surface of the container. How fast or slow these particles move, meanwhile, depends on their temperature. In fact, that's essentially how temperature is defined. Boyle's law assumes that the amount of gas and the temperature of that gas are kept constant. It would be more than a hundred years before the next gas law was defined, one that considers the relationship between gas volume and temperature. During the 1780s, as the Montgolfiers were launching hot air balloons with the help of their fantasy Montgolfier gas, a genuine lighter-than-air mm. gas was also being tested for balloon flight. On the 1st of December 1783, 10 days after the first manned hot air balloon flight, fellow inventor Jacques Charles launched the first manned hydrogen balloon flight. Hydrogen is less dense compared to the elements that make up the atmosphere. But what if it were also heated? Would it become even lighter? 
Four years after the pioneering balloon flights of 1783, Charles filled five smaller balloons, each to the same volume but with a different gas. He then heated every balloon to 80 degrees Celsius and saw that they all expanded by the same amount. Although he failed to publish these findings at the time, they were later credited to him hmm. by natural philosopher Joseph Louis Gay Lussac. Charles Law now famously describes how the volume of a sample of dry gas is directly proportional to temperature, all else being equal, such as air pressure and gas amount. As well as hot air balloon flight, Charles Law can explain rising thermals of air in the atmosphere. When the sun heats the Earth's surface, it acts as a radiator and warms the air immediately above. That air expands as it warms and its lower density compels it upwards. We see this all the time. On a small scale, rising air gives us fair weather clouds, showers and thunderstorms. On a larger scale, rising air results in tropical cyclones, low pressure, weather fronts and global wind circulation. The engine that drives hot air balloons is ultimately the same engine that drives all of the planet's weather, rising bubbles of hot air governed by Charles Law. Of course, the atmosphere is chaotic and complicated. As well as Boyle's Law and Charles Law, there are other gas laws that help explain the relationships between air pressure and temperature, as well as the amount and volume of gas. These gas laws will be explored in part two, along with the ideal gas law, which unites all of the various relationships in one equation and is essential for predicting the weather.